Is it just me or is Henry Cavill more buff this time around? I tried to keep my wife away from the show because I didn't want her to see Cavill and then me, but she watched it and she loved it for numerous reasons. And I don't blame her. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. The Witcher Season 2 is dropping on Friday. I have seen the first six episodes because that's what Netflix sent me. We're going to talk about it today, and I'm going to tell you guys how excited I am for Episodes 7 and 8. Let's get into it. Spoiler free. Convinced Yennefer's life was lost in a battle, Geralt of Rivia brings Princess Cirilla to the safest place he knows, his childhood home. While the continent's kings, elves, humans, and demons strive for supremacy outside its walls, he must protect the girl from something far more dangerous, the mysterious power she possesses inside. So this is a crazy week, it's a massive month, things like Cobra Kai, which I'm about to start watching, Spider-Man, which I'm seeing today, and then I had The Witcher just sitting there, ready to be screened, and I said, am I willing to take on this epic quest, or do I want to wait a few more days? Because it feels like one of those shows, especially looking back at season one, it's just a lot to take in, in a good way. I really enjoyed what season one was able to do, but because of the way the story was constructed, it left a lot of longtime fans and newcomers feeling kind of... Okay, I do wish the narrative was more straightforward, as opposed to jumping to different timelines and doing everything that season one did. Again, once you piece it all together, and I had numerous friends that did this as well and came back to me and said, yeah, it's better the second time. And, and that was kind of how I felt too, but I watched season one and I'm like, these are some phenomenal characters, some great storylines being set up here, and I am so pumped to see where it goes. So I started season two, and after the first episode, and we're talking the second the credits hit, and by the way, stay through the credits because they'll do certain music cues and things that uh, I just love. The attention to detail in this show is something that is so impressive. I sat back and I said, that is already the perfect way to start this season. And that episode may have ended up being my favorite of the first six episodes just because of how well it's constructed. It does feel more separated than the rest of the episodes because we start to explore numerous storylines, but kind of that contained story with Geralt, with Ciri, and a couple of other things that I'm not going to talk about right now. Oh my god, I'm like, I'm in. I'm in because I love how season two decided to go with more straightforward storytelling. Yes, the complexity of the first was fascinating, uh, but you're trying to do so many things here and to do it in a way that is more simplified, I believe, is a win at the end of the day because you let your story, you let your characters, I think most importantly the characters, speak for themselves and they do that in space baits in season two, at least in the first six episodes. Then we look at the character of Siri, who I liked in season one. I really did, but finding her stride this time around, loving her significantly more because of the moments that she gets and uh, the idea of looking inward and having that confidence in herself, but also being able to, and really unable to, trust others around her creates this complexity for her character that I thought was something much needed for her. She does a wonderful job in this show. Geralt, I mean, he's the character of note, obviously. He didn't have too much to say in season one. He's an imposing presence, both physically and uh, the way that he carries himself. I mean, just the most B.A. Getting Henry Cavill for this is brilliant. I said it in season one. I'll say it again. Uh, but the way he carries himself, and this time around, more dialogue better line delivery, and he has the grunts and the things that we love, and when he's fighting, it's so believable the way he carries a sword. It's B.A. It's so freaking B.A., but I really liked his dialogue and the display of emotion because he's dealing with something that he believes is going to cement the way his mentality is carrying forward, and that is the loss of Yennefer. That is weighing so heavily on his shoulders in that first episode. Yes, the first episode is a kind of a contained story, a great one, with a lot of emotion, but what he's dealing with, you can see it in his eye. Well, you see a lot of things in his eyes, but you can see it in his eyes and his emotional state and the moments where he wasn't saying a lot, I believe, are just as telling as the moments where he's talking. But again, more dialogue this time around that is needed. And it's their relationship, Siri and Geralt, that is genuinely the heart and soul of this story. But it's not the only storyline happening. There are two major plots with varying subplots that the show is trying its best to handle. Oh, and by the way, time has passed since the end of season one. So we're picking up with Geralt. And then on the other side of things, we have Yennefer's storyline. And while her storyline is a bit slower than the other side of things, I did care 
a ton. And whenever we are spending time with her, even though I'm not as enamored with her side of the plot, we deal with a lot of political things and then we branch off into uh, other groups of individuals. We deal with the elves and we'll talk about them here in just a second. But I still enjoyed her story because she herself is so compelling this season. Everything that she's having to deal with, both inner turmoil and, you know, what's going on on the outside. This is me trying to be vague because I don't want to ruin anything for you guys. She's really, really good. And then we have other characters like Triss and uh, those that we encounter that come across as one way at the beginning of the six episodes. But as we progress, we see more things about them that shine a light into the type of character that they are. So I believe they did a great job, more so than anything, with the characters and the development of said characters. And that, to me, is why season two is so great. It's a character piece or a multiple character piece. Character pieces. Pieces of characters. And then in season two, we are broadening this world, which is something I was really hoping they would do more so in this season. And they absolutely do that. Not only that, but we're going back to our Witcher and getting this relationship between he and other Witchers and the bond that we see when we go back to his home. That's what really opened up a new side of Geralt for me. And again, being someone who's not as familiar with the games uh, or the novels, seeing a, a more personable side of him, but also those that he's interacting with, that he's comfortable with, I just thought was really great. And I'm like, even though there aren't a lot of action scenes happening, maybe in this episode, or uh, there are a handful of scenes where we get a lot of dialogue, a lot of dialogue, not as much action. But even those moments, for the most part, were really, really great when the focus was on Geralt or Yennefer or Ciri and Geralt's kind of storyline going back home was genuinely awesome. And after episode one, there may not be as much action as fans are looking for in two, three, and four. Uh, again, very dialogue heavy. When the action comes, we will go scenes without a lot of things happening in that nature. But when it comes, it is so impactful. I'm talking some of the more entertaining fantasy action sequences I have ever seen. The power sets, the exploration of new abilities, the creatures, the creature design, the monsters, seeing things that I did not anticipate or imagine in the back half of these six episodes. Uh, the effects Really great. Now, the episodes that I watched, they're early screeners, so some of the things weren't finished, such as the sound design and uh, a couple of elements within the color grading. So I'm not going to judge that too harshly, but what I was able to see was genuinely great. The CGI, for the most part, is seamless. And again, just the way that Henry Cavill handles himself in those action sequences is one of the most BA things I've ever seen in my life. The final things I want to talk about is this... The final things I want to talk about, spoiler-free, uh, this season deals with more politics than season one. That was definitely integrated, but we kind of branch and veer off into the elves' territory. Now, they're interesting, but what this season is doing is it's setting up things to come from them that have me more excited than what I actually saw. And not to say that their storyline was bad. It's not bad at all. I just feel like better things are to come. And that leads me to... My biggest criticism, and it's not a huge criticism because I was so just in on this season more so than season one. Yeah, I said it. I think season two is better than season one. Uh, I think the linear storytelling helped a lot. But I look at when we're going away from our core three characters, when we're going away from Siri and Geralt and Yennefer and focusing on other characters who are interesting in themselves, uh, a couple of devastating elements to their journeys. One character I did not mind kind of focusing on him. Not going to say who that is, but if you watched a certain anime movie earlier this year, then you're going to know who that is. I guess it's not a spoiler, but I don't want to say it. But when we look at branching off into some of these storylines, I wasn't as engaged when that was happening compared to going back to the characters of note, especially Geralt and Ciri. That was the story that had me hooked from top to bottom. So maybe the focus could have still been a bit more clear than it even was. But if episodes 7 and 8 end in the way that I kind of hope they do, then I'm going to be looking at season 2 saying a vast improvement from top to bottom. Even though it may be a bit of a setup season, you're setting up things to come either in future episodes or seasons. I'm okay with a setup season if it's executed properly. And I thought the writing in this season was genuinely 
great. So before I get into my score, if you guys liked this review and you want to talk more things on Netflix, be sure to subscribe to this channel and drop your thumbs up down below. That lets me know that you want a spoiler review this weekend because we have to talk some spoilers. So come back this Friday and let me know if you would like to see that. But this season is an upgrade in many ways, but the linear storytelling is a good place to start. The focus is on building these characters emotionally, and that only makes these top-notch action sequences more impactful. This may feel a little high to some, but I was just engaged. I love a good fantasy story. 90% from me. I <laughs> love this season of The Witcher, or at least the first six episodes. Again, it could completely go downhill, and I'll be changing things on Friday, but I really love what I saw. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Appreciate you big time. Come back. Uh, Spider-Man tomorrow morning? What? Okay.